welcome to this class. Before you start painting, I suggest to dilute your colors with water. So follow blue. Let's see my quinacridone red, imidazolone yellow, and that's all I need for the sky. What I'm also going to add with this sketch is some rocks here, just so I visually know how large the a water portion is going to be. A little more water and I don't want any puddles of water on top of the paper. Just nicely absorbed water inside and the shiny paper before I begin applying colors wet on wet. So this is my follow blue and quinacridone red. It's a little thicker paint but I also want a little bit of yellow because I want to make it a cooler yellow. Kind of like a sea green a little bit. Not really sea green. <laughs> I should say like a uh, maybe like maybe like a blue greenish shade. And I'm gonna show you more of the yellow. We'll definitely do that. And I'm just gonna keep moving this way. So if you want some area to look more intense with the colors, just grab more like a heavy cream like ratio. So the ratio between water and paint. Now the top part of the sky is definitely. A little more like darker bluish so we gotta consider that I'm gonna wipe my brush on the towel just so I have wet less of that water so I can smooth this top part that I just painted there you go and then what I need to do is start working on the yellow part so I'm gonna clean my brush actually scratch that I want to make this a little more intense and I'm gonna show this to you if you don't have that intensity grab some of this yellow and blue cream I'm sorry heavy cream like ratio between one and paint and go over the areas you, you just painted I'm just gonna put least some of that paint here since this part is a little more bluish think of the composition but don't get sidetracked uh, too like or try to uh, don't try to match to the reference image too much because that can get really confusing so here's my yellow and some of the red and I'm first going to apply it toward like these yellowish parts. This, the portion of the sky here is pretty light. So I just don't want to have too much paint and water on my brush overall. But I do want a little more of the pink, my red, which is the quin red. And in a second, I'm going to start grabbing more of the red with blue. So quinacridone red and follow blue. So a little more of the yellow with the red. Maybe place it here on the bottom. This is the area where you can add a little more of that yellow if you want some of this to match to those reflections over the water. I'm, I kind of like the sky, so I might just keep it. So it's important that like if you like the way something looks, just leave it the way it is, right? So what I'm gonna do is clean my brush. What you wanna do is grab a, a smaller brush. This is my Songbird size three. And you can add smaller clouds. So for this purpose, you would want to use like a, a heavy cream, cream top like ratio of the red, blue, and yellow. Maybe more blue, more red. Don't overly mix these colors because if you do, then um, it's just, uh, it becomes like too muddy gray. And you want to see the separation of colors. So this is more like a blue gray. I have a class about creating your own grays and watercolors. So don't go with like some gray shade, like Payne's gray or something. You want to always create your own shade of gray. You don't want to have much of that paint on your brush. And you kind of, you can hear the scraping, right? This is called dry brushing, where you just don't have enough on your brush. Now be careful if your sky is still wet. My sky is still wet, so I don't want to touch the sky. I just want to go right below it. But dry brushing, like even if you have thicker paint, it will still happen as long as you don't have much paint on your brush. Now this is my long cool size too. I'm gonna grab a little more of all this. So red, blue, some yellow. And I'm gonna go right, actually right here, this is where, where I have this uh, sand line. So what I'm gonna do is stop right there. I just need a little bit more of the paint, water. So continue going with this transparent kind of layer but now you have more water so it's not as much dry brushing right so we're leaving this little line for that sand 
and you keep going and then more water definitely more water for that dry brushing and go below that as well you can still continue doing dry brushing but you don't want as much as before so like this right if you want to connect some areas you can still go back and then let's see a little more of that here water and paint and then clean my brush and this is where I'm going to start adding this quinacridone red with burnt sienna okay so first it's a little thicker water to yeah it's like I'm sorry this is like a milk like ratio I want a little more of that quin red I need to quickly dilute it because I already don't have enough there you go and you want to connect this part to the water right so you want to actually see these colors connect, kind of bleeds over. I'm going to grab more of this to add it here. And now I'm going to clean my brush, wipe it, and just use just a clean brush, see how it feels. A little more water, I'd say more of that red. More water, more water, more water, so it becomes transparent. I don't need really... Uh, the dry brushing the light wider parts of the paper to show through I'm gonna clean my actually I'm not gonna clean I need more of the Quinn red I'm gonna add more of this here more intense just like in one of my uh, versions so I'm squeezing Quinn red Quinn red burnt sienna right there now this is way better there you go that's what I'm talking about so I'm gonna clean my brush and grab again the cleaner version of the two and go right here now this it will be part parts of this part that we painted the water will be dry and parts will be still wet so you kind of want to feel it out just a little bit of paint on your brush and just go through it just to add some of that paint in there maybe a little thicker paint now like a, a heavy cream to add a little more this grass so what I need is more like a I'd say like a water to milk of the two colors that I have and I want to connect the the, the red sand with it it needs to be very like more diluted paint with water because this is wet on dry uh, but also you want a dry brush so you, some areas stay paper dry more of the two i keep going keep going this is my long cool size two it's a um softer brush now remember that once you're done applying color here that becomes wet on wet so you want to adjust always the ratio. Now this is burnt sienna, some of the uh, Van Dyke brown. I'm going to apply this thicker paint. So whatever I see like darks, more darks, that's where I'm going to apply it. It's like here, here. And what will make it darker is adding some of the indigo. So this is my dark spot right here. And this is my darker spot. So Van Dyke brown, some of the indigo. And let's not forget we have the same thing going on over the sand so that thick paint that feels more like creamy paint right more like a cream top like ratio between water and paint so think of dairy you want that to go over the sand too right and then go back here because this is how we create the dimension some areas need more burnt sienna so i just grab burnt sienna another thing which you could do which i'll show you in a second is add these rocks in the background dry brushing by dry brushing first i just want a little more here some more of the indigo so that's how you create the dimension just by adding shadows in between okay now with that same brush i'm going to grab this more like a heavy cream to cream top of the van dyke brown some burnt sienna and indigo and then we're going to create these rocks so we want to go do dry brushing actually it's kind of like a squished brush I'd say and then you're creating rocks the best rocks are created like the most natural they look if they are like dry brushed and then we can go a little higher here so this is good and then we keep going maybe we can add some more but I need more paint I don't know if there are rocks there no it's kind of like yeah maybe some rocks so you can go a little bit further out here pull it through but remember about the perspective everything here would be smaller and here would be much larger and that's um, something we will be really thinking about in a second when we add some grass right all these elements here in the foreground or foreground like right here closer to us all this would be much bigger so some rocky parts here you can also use that 
Van Dyke Brown the darks, Van Dyke Brown and Indigo for the grass. So those would be the shadows. So perspective and dimension are important in this painting. And then you want to dilute a little bit more of that paint that you had on your brush. This is my Indigo Van Dyke Brown. You're going to also dry brush these lines. So that's for the, um, for the waves. Feels like I don't have enough water, so I'm just going to grab a little more water. And don't give up if something doesn't work out the first time because everything is about practice. So thank you so much for your time and let me know if you have any questions.